So from this diagram we saw on the previous slide, um, we're going we're to look at the scenario that's most commonly compatible of the same thing happening. So a decrease in blood pressure um, and or an increase in osmolarity. So that is going to be all of these things. Can you see that the ones I've just circled either involved a change, a, a decrease in blood pressure and an increase in osmolarity or an increase in blood pressure and a decrease in osmolarity. So these are gonna be compatible in terms of the responses um, to the two different stimuli. There are some situations where they are um, in opposition, then it gets more complex. So I wanna, what I wanna do is draw out for you the response of the body to low blood pressure we're going to do this one as blue um, because it's going to involve volume. And then osmolarity, I will start off in yellow, um, indicating changes in like urine concentration. I don't know, that works for me. So, and a lot of this is going to be a review. If this is like, I know this stuff, um, great. So, response to decreased blood pressure, what is this going to trigger? A couple different things. Baroreceptors in the aortic arch and carotid body. So I'm gonna say in the great vessels, baroreceptors in the renal cells, I'm sorry, the, the granular cells of the kidney Both of these are going to have a similar effect. So we've got the sympathetic nervous system. Decreased baroreceptor fi firing triggers the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is actually going to also turn on those granular cells, stimulate them to produce renin. Renin is going to um, Activate angiotensin 1, ACE, which is angiotensin converting enzyme actually produced by the lungs, is going to result in the production of angiotensin 2. Um, a precursor is angiotensin 1. And angiotensin 1 is going to have three different effects. One is going to be, and I'm going to do effects in. I'm going to do cardiovascular effects in red. So vasoconstriction of our arterioles. This results in increased total peripheral resistance and increased blood pressure. While I'm in red and talking about cardiovascular responses, the sympathetic nervous system is also going to cause vasoconstriction directly. It's also going to cause increased heart rate and increased stroke volume. These both increase cardiac output to increase blood pressure. Now, angiotensin 2 has several other effects besides vasoconstriction. One is target, targeting our adrenal gland to do what? Produce aldosterone. This is going to cause our distal collecting duct to reabsorb sodium and water will follow. That's going to increase blood pressure. Angiotensin 2 also stimulates the hypothalamic thirst center, makes you thirsty. So you drink water. 
our intestines are going to absorb the water, mostly our intestines, that's going to increase fluid volume and increase blood pressure. Angiotensin 1 also triggers the hypothalamus to tell the pituitary to release its hormones, posterior pituitary to release antidiuretic hormone, which is going to target the collecting duct of the kidneys to reabsorb water. Reabsorb water increases blood pressure. A, so that's the response to decreased blood pressure. Osmolarity is often going to increase in the same situation. So an example of that would be sweating. When you're sweating, you're having a decrease in blood pressure and an increase in osmolarity. This pathway could also occur due to hemorrhage um, that's the main one. Increase in, is not, in osmolarity could be due to um, just alone and eating salt, just plain salt. Dehydration due to sweating is going to do both of these. Um, increasing, just drinking hypertonic saline, that's the one that's going to have conflicting results with our effects with, with this. So thinking about these examples is dehydration, um, sweating, or just ingesting salt. So the stimulus is going to be increased osmolarity in the ECF due to sweating a bunch, diarrhea, or eating a bunch of salt. This is going to cause osmoreceptor in the hypothalamus to detect this. Okay, we're in the hypothalamus, that's our integrator. So a hypothalamus stimulation is going to do both this, cause ADH release, as well as cause thirst, which makes sense if we have high osmolarity, we want to reduce that sodium concentration. That's osmolarity is primarily due to increased sodium concentration. We want to reabsorb more water to dilute down that sodium. <clears throat> 